Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to discuss questioning techniques. There is a very, very valid reason why you need to learn how to question and interview people. Uh, firstly, to get the information you need. Remember the term information requirements from the last lecture. Uh, and secondly, to test the veracity of the source. Is the source lying to you or are they withholding information? Well, not necessarily withholding on purpose, but it's maybe that you have to keep digging to get to that nugget of information that they have for you. Sometimes people are reluctant to give up information. It's up to you to dig that information out. And that's part of what we're going to do today. So the aims, focus on formulating questions. How do you ask the right question to get the right information? Um, Improve your questioning techniques. Uh, this will help you uh, a number of different levels, not only in uh, human intelligence taskings, uh, getting information, but on a day-to-day -day basis. And so you may obtain more information. The more you dig, the more you get. And also you become more aware of when people are using techniques on you. So if people are starting to use these techniques on you, then you can spot them a lot easier. You can understand and appreciate uh, that they may be trying to uh, gather information from you that you may not want to give up. So the content, why do we ask questions, the types of questions, uh, different types of questions, and we'll go through a quick summary again, obviously. So why do we ask questions? Here we go. First of all, to obtain information, to obtain new information, um, to confirm information, from various sources, which is always a good intelligence practice, and of course to answer our information requirements. This allows us as well to test or assess our source, to build rapport, uh, to establish dialogue, uh, and to buy time, which is always very useful. And uh, you'll see this in more uh, more of a practical setting. But to build rapport, uh, you have to ask questions. Uh, people don't like it if you sit there and. Uh, talk about soccer or talk about what was on the television yesterday and you don't ask personal questions. Some people hate actually being asked personal questions but it's often taken as rudeness if you don't. So it's a difficult balance and that's what human intelligence is all about. It's about balance. Uh, and now we're going to teach you how to uh, direct and control the conversation. That's another reason for asking questions. Uh, and it trains up your source so that next time you won't have to ask so many detailed questions, they will come up with the answers first, and so on and so on. Um, it gives them good practice and uh, training at the same time. So what are blocks to good question techniques? Any ideas? Lack of training or experience. When you're nervous, it's difficult to employ good questioning technique. There you go. Uh, if you ask aggressive or biased questions, um, like, why did you buy that Ford car when you could have bought a Jaguar, uh, which is so much better? Or, tell me the answer to this because I need to know, where were you last night? Aggressive and biased. Although, I would probably prefer a Ford instead of a Jaguar. Uh, your behavior. If you're too close, too far away, your body language is sending the wrong wrong messages. And the same with the, the source. That is a block to good questioning techniques. If the subject's complex and you don't explain it or break it down properly, that's a block. If you haven't planned it or your planning was flawed in some way, uh, then that could also lead to poor questioning technique. Uh, asking dumb questions. Um, cat walks past, you ask, is that a cat? It's a dumb question. The person or the source is going to turn around and look at you and go, well, obviously, it's a cat. So what types of questions do we have? Open, closed. And there's other variations, but these are the um, most used ones. Why, well, yes, I am a bit stressed. Why do you ask? Is that an open question or a closed question? It's more open, isn't it? Because closed is uh, yes or no. 
So open questions usually start with who, what, where, when, why, which, or how, and I'll give you some examples. They encourage conversation. They allow the source to speak and explain. They usually can't be answered in a few words. Uh, sometimes it's a good thing. Uh, you want them to feel relaxed, to explain something in their own words, uh, but sometimes some people can go on and on and on. So you have to learn how to control that and stop them without damaging rapport. And that's as it says, you may lose control of the conversation as they go in. It depends how much time you've got, it depends how much patience you've got. Uh, some people can prattle on for long periods of time. And if you allow them too much scope, they may go off at tangents. So you're losing the focus of the information requirement, the IR. It's good for rapport, because you're encouraging uh, them to talk. They'll relax. They may bend forward as they speak towards you uh, to try and uh, involve you more in the conversation. Uh, so it's, it's a very good rapport builder. And again, it all comes down to time. And there it demonstrates interest, gives you an open to practice your listening skills and your non-verbal communications, your body language. So you can sit there, you can nod your head, you can put your chin on your hand and go, hmm, this is all very interesting, and send those messages out without actually saying anything. And that's a combination of skills. Uh, they're general, so you may not get the answer that you're looking for, you may get an indication, uh, but you may get more information than you were bargaining for. And that's sometimes a good thing. So remember to have your notebook or pen with you if, uh, if you have the opportunity, because there may be other leads to other questions that you can note down and ask once they've stopped talking. It allows them a little bit of freedom in answering, which is fine, uh, and it serves as an open invitation to talk, so it encourages them to um, push out detail. Tell me a little bit more about that. What time was that? But you don't, once they start talking, the only reason you butt in is uh, if there is a very, very important piece of information or you want to stop or redirect the conversation. It allows you to monitor their behavior. Are they nervous? How's their body language? Are they getting involved? Uh, does it, you know, are they trying to build rapport using body language as well? Uh, are they pushing back? Are they scared of talking? Are they bored of talking? Um, you, can, you can detect all this from their body language while they're talking. Allows them to show emotion. And as I said, use their body language. Uh, and it reveals what the source consider, uh, considers to be important, not just what you consider to be important. And that may be valuable. There may be some valuable elements to, the, to, to those conversations that you, you haven't even thought of or you haven't asked about. It allows the source to participate in the exchange, again, and improve rapport, which is a critical factor. Make sure that your questioning technique doesn't seem like an interrogation. Tell me what. Tell me what time. Tell me exactly what happened. You've got to be able to maintain and build rapport at the same time as getting information because if you piss them off, they don't like you or don't like your techniques, what's going to happen? Yeah, they'll probably walk away. They're not going to help you. So questions, who, what, where, when, why, how, at each point, make a note of uh, what they're saying and then come back to it and drill down. So the who's, who was there, who did you see, who did you hear, what are the names, full names, what were they wearing, what vehicles were they using, so on and so forth. Each little point, then you go to the next one, and then to the next one, but only once you've finished that section of the, of the, uh, the conversation. Who did you meet yesterday? What did you do last night? Where did you do it? What restaurant did you go to? When did you finish? Now, you're looking for specifics. So for a question like that, you're looking for a, an exact time as possible. They may say about, so 10 o'clock at night. So, okay, about 10 o'clock at night or exactly 10 o'clock at night. Um, I don't know exactly. I didn't look at my watch, but I, I think we left the restaurant around about 10 o'clock. That's a good answer. Most people 
don't check their watches at every uh, section of their life so to get a pretty firm about is, is always good unless your time is a critical component to your information requirements how did you travel to work this morning the usual way I walked from here and then got the bus to work okay great now break it down get the times what time did you leave your house how did you get from your house to the bus stop uh, show me the route you can use a map uh, what bus did you get what number did you get what time did you get on who was on why did you sit why did you get off and so on and so forth what was the bus company there's lots of questions you can ask for for elements to to that But make sure it doesn't seem like you're at the dentist and uh, sorry they're at the dentist because they will not come back and speak to you again so why questions produce reasons why did you do that can you give a history can give sorry a history and an opinion why are you married Ooh, that's a very good question that can open up a whole can of worms as well um, but this is just an example why did you buy that shirt and the way you ask the question can mean that it's a, you demean their, uh, their good choice or you uh, applaud their good choice. Why did the UK vote for Brexit? Or oh, come from the UK, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, but it's a good way of getting um, the source's answer from them, but also their opinion, just like I gave you the opinion. When I gave that answer, it was, I don't really know. Yeah, I don't understand that concept of why they voted for breakfast. Uh, breakfast. Excuse me, for breakfast. Breakfast again. Um, for Brexit, uh, I have no idea. But, but you see the point. The point is you answer a question like why, and you get not only the answer, but generally you get the opinion. Why did you want to do dentistry? Can lead to endless futile explanations so you have to control them can annoy the subject if it seems critical uh, can be seen as accusatory why did you buy that pink shirt and why are you wearing it why did you leave the country travel by net metro why didn't you do something about this that sounds accusatory uh, so you have to be very careful about um, those that rapport building so how questions associated with sequence and process and feelings how did you feel about this how did you feel when your dog died how do you make a cup of tea how did you feel when you were invited to this training maybe you weren't there how are you that can open up a can of worms especially if they're not well and they want to tell you all about it so be prepared for complex answers that you may have to break into and sort of bring to a halt while still building the rapport so some disadvantages of open questions. Unnecessary timing pack, they could take quite a while to answer properly. Subject may talk and talk, but not about what your informa uh, information requirement is. Because they're chatty. Because they want to avoid the question. That's uh, quite common. Because they're downloaders, they want to talk forever, they just download. I have friends who just cannot stop talking. And once they get going, they'll talk about pretty much anything. And difficult to make notes without losing control of the meeting. Sometimes you, you'll want to take notes uh, because there may be critical points that come up in the conversation while they're talking. There may be some um, body language that may flag up that they're lying about something. Uh, so taking notes is always very useful. Uh, in certain intelligence organizations, you'll work in a pair so that one will be doing the questioning and one will be watching the source. Close questions. Extract a piece of information, but they don't encourage that further discussion, which is good. It means you have control of the conversation, but you may also have to ask follow-up questions uh, if, if you think relevant. They often begin with the do, the is, the are, did, was, or were, can, and usually are answered yes or no. Now, kids are great for this, because if they can get away with answering just yes or just no, they will. They can be used to validate information. Uh, 
You said the car was blue? Yes. Okay. Uh, the number plate was ABC1234. And no, the number plate was ABC1235. Okay. It can be used to uh, control sources. Uh, you stick more to yes or no answers and it limits their conversation but it does start to become a little bit like an interrogation and you can direct it so you can ask a few closed questions and as soon as you get to the area you're most interested in open up the questions a bit more some disadvantages get less information back will the attack be carried out tomorrow yes but when when exactly will the attack be carried out Oh, tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Travel by work by metro, yes. Which line did you use? Uh, the yellow line, then the red line. It can give away information. Right? It can give away uh, what you don't know uh, if you're asking specific closed questions. Um, but you can also be using to validate the source. Uh, an old uh, police trick is to ask questions, get the answers, carry on the interviews and then close to the end, maybe when you're doing a summary you ask the same questions again, maybe in a different different style. If you get the same answer, that's fine. It seems like it's, it's it seems more likely it comes from memory whereas if you get start to get different answers then you go well hold on, you said at the start that the car was blue now you're saying it's green. Can you explain the discrepancy? What is inside the apartment? So if you're asking someone, are there any insurgents inside the apartment, you're going to get a yes or no answer. Yeah, there are. Or if you ask what or who is inside the apartment, you're more likely to get, uh, well, there's a family of five, a mother, father, three kids. Oh, and there's uh, two insurgents. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So some of the benefits. Reliability of data, as you see there in this uh, sort of matrix for open questions, reliability is a bit lower, closed questions, higher. And then when you get down to ease of analysis, it's difficult to, it's more difficult to analyze open questions because there's more, more information, it can be more complex. Uh, and of course, it's a little easier if you're using uh, closed questions as far as anal analysis goes. A pretty definitive yes no can seem like an interrogation if they're all yes or no questions and you wouldn't do that for instance if you're talking to your friends uh, walking down the street it would get very boring very quickly if all they're answering is yes or no if, and you're asking lots and lots of questions it would seem like a bizarre conversation so you have to relax it a bit open it up use more open questions uh, to build rapport and get more detail. But use yes or no uh, close questions when you're looking for those specifics. Did you see any weapons? Yes. And then you open up the question. What type of weapons did you see? I saw pistols, AK-47s, uh, RPGs. Okay. How many of each? And then you get more specific. I saw two pistols, 10 AK 47s, two RPGs. Okay. And then you're drilling down more into the questioning techniques again. Can lead to some assumptions. Oh, apologies for that. Were there lots of people with them? Uh, yes. Okay. You've got to answer follow up questions, don't you? You've got to say, uh, okay, how many? 50. Um, how many males, how many females? Uh, 20 males, 30 females. Okay, so you know, it can, it can, you've got to drill down from the closed question. So were there lots of people with him? Yes or no is really the only appropriate answer. When he says no, I said okay. Were there, was there anyone with him? Uh, yeah, there was one person, but not a lot, just one. Okay, so you've got to ask those follow up questions for clarity. Good word questions uh, encourage opinion. They do allow for discussion, and you don't always want to discuss things when uh, you're handling 
a source. Could you climb Mount Everest? Ooh, could I? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I could, given you know, the right training, the right equipment, uh, maybe a helicopter dropped me off uh, two-thirds of the way up. Would you give first aid to an injured terrorist war fan? Ooh, uh, yeah. Um, that's a tough one, and you're going to get some interesting points, interesting discussion points out of this, and maybe some insight into your source's uh, thought processes. Beware of assumptions, there's always the possibility of that. You've got to be very, very careful that they answer the questions, you don't answer them in your head. So, as far as the meeting goes, the greeting, the report, talking about the next meeting, and you tend to talk about the next meeting right at the start in case something disrupts this meeting uh, and you have to separate. So, as an example, you're both in a restaurant, you've just sat down at the table. Uh, hi, how are you? Good to see you again. You're looking great. Uh, oh, by the way, let's meet this time next Friday. And all of a sudden, there's a fire in the kitchen, and everyone evacuates, and you lose your source. You've already made that next meeting for Friday, so right in the first few minutes. Are you well? How are you doing? All those sort of questions could um, invite lots of discussion right at the very start. No, I have cancer. No, I damaged my leg while I was skiing. Uh, I did this, I did that, I did, and then you have to listen. So it's better off to ask uh, more close questions at the start, so controlling the conversation. The next point is the information extraction. Open questions and some precise close questions. All right, you remember our information requirement? Uh, tell me the information you have regarding that. You're setting the parameters. I want information only on the information requirements at this stage. Uh, carry on. So you let them ramble, you take notes. At the end of maybe the first few paragraphs, you stop and just to clarify, go back. Tell me a bit more about this. Tell me the color of that. Tell me the weapons you saw here. And then back on to the story. And then at the end, the last 15%, uh, you're looking at uh, confirming the next meet. Okay, you said it at the beginning, but now you want to say it. You've, you've managed to stay through the length of the interview, the, uh, the meeting. Uh, now you're confirming at the end, so it'll be right at the front of their mind. The next meeting will be next Friday, same time, same place. Uh, and also a recap. Recaps are very valuable, so you're looking through your notes, you say, okay, you said that car was green, or no, no, sorry, you said it was blue, and that's an interesting trick as well, is actually changing the answer um, and getting them to validate it. So uh, previously we talked about uh, a blue car. Uh, when you're doing the recap, you say, okay, well, you mentioned that these four guys got into that red car, and now the uh, source should then stop you at that point and go, no, no, I said it was blue. Okay, yeah, sorry, yep, that's true. You've just validated his answer. Uh, you haven't had to ask him the question again. He's given you the answer, uh, and it's the way you've sort of gone through the recap. You don't do that for every single point, uh, but it's good to throw in every now and then and pretend that you, you missed the correct answer and let them uh, reconfirm it. And I continue building the rapport. Great, that was fantastic. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. We're having a great relationship, and I'm uh, very happy that uh, you choose to pass this information to me, so on and so forth. Blow smoke up their ass, shake their hands, and meet them again next Friday. So avoid leading questions. This is a favorite police trick. Um, so you saw John pick up the pistol, point at the victim, take aim, and shoot her in the head. Well, that's a statement, really. And that's a statement from me to him to our source or our, the person we're interviewing. Uh, I said no. No would be the answer to that probably. And then you'd have to start again. So it's a leading question. If the source said yes to that then he's just admitted to seeing John pick up the pistol, point it at the victim, take aim and shoot her in the head. Which may actually not be the case. But you've delivered all those facts in one leading question. Probably better to say tell me what you saw in the car park. And then the source will say, I saw John pick up a pistol, point at the victim, take aim, 
but then he did not shoot her in the head. Oh, okay, good, that's a valid point. And choose when you uh, want the source to say what you want him to say, which is bad practice. Were they mistreated? Uh, yes. What's the definition of mistreatment? My, my definition will be different from yours. My definition will be different from the sources. Uh, so, um, better to say, how were they treated? And this is a favorite of uh, wives. Compound multiple questions. A ton of questions in one question. To which you can answer yes or no. Did you go to the shop? Did you get the milk? Did you fill the car with fuel? Did you collect the kid from school? Uh, yes. But no. I did go to the shop. I did get the milk. I did fill the car with fuel. But I forgot the kid. Oh, damn it. Negative positive questions. Questions about the structure and the way you ask forces a negative response. You don't really like that guy, do you? If someone says that to you, uh, they're looking for a negative response. No, I don't know. I definitely do not like him. You wouldn't lend me ten dollars, would you? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Better, could you please lend me ten dollars? Because you've said you wouldn't you've already put them on the back foot, you're already putting pressure on them. So that pressurizing negative positive questions pressurizes the source to say what you want them to say. You didn't notice any suspicious military activity when you traveled the road, did you? Uh, no. You could do this, couldn't you? Climb Everest, no. Easy for the source just to say no, and people will often take the path of least resistance. People are generally lazy. Um, so if you give an option just to say no to something by the way you ask the question they will just say no to something. Detail, logical, persistent questioning. Um, this is pretty much you see something it's valuable for your information requirements you dig down. So when I was asking about the weapons, the two pistols, the AKs and the RPGs you want to dig down a bit more as much as possible. Who had what weapon? Did one person have two weapons? I did one person have a pistol and an AK, or a pistol and an RPG, or an RPG and a pistol? Um, were the men armed? Were the women not? What were the women armed with? What were the men armed with? And so on and so forth. You would keep digging down, digging down, digging down. So, in summary, we have to ask why do we ask questions? to get the information. Uh, what types of questions are there? Generally open and closed. And how do we use those different types of questions? At the start, maybe more closed questions so we can control the conversation, then a bit more open and back to the recap, you're starting to ask more closed questions again uh, to, to, uh, get the to ascertain the validity of the questions and the answers. Some questions to avoid, multiple complex questions, and in summary, practice at home. Practice on your kids, on your wife. Mix and max your questions. This is something that you can't just do overnight. This is why detectives only become detectives after a certain amount of time, a certain amount of experience. Uh, it's quite complex to ask the right questions at the right time and still build rapport with your source. And that's what you want to do. If you start to ask questions that uh, piss them off, then you may not see them again, and you've spoiled that uh, that relationship, which could be valuable to getting the IRs. Okay, guys, it's been fun. Look forward to the uh, next lecture, which is questioning strategies, uh, which goes into more detail. Thanks for your time.